As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. I'll read Robert's comment here. Authentic gaming culture and sponsorship. Metaverse offers a new paradigm shift in digital interactions, but is that not gamification of the internet in a way? It may not be authentic esports, but surely relevant and an important future focus. I mean, Robert, I don't know if I'm addressing this question directly, and I'm curious what you guys think, but um, it's not that I have an issue with, like, I'm not trying to say you shouldn't be authentic, right? It's just that I think the point I made was, if I told you, Robert, be authentic, like it's so nebulous. Like, what does that mean? What do you have? What do you do? Right? Like, what do you then go and do? And and I think it's just kind of a cheap word, cheap nebulous word that people throw around. And the comment I made on my panel was, Ven was really authentic, but failed anyways. Right? So it can't just be about authenticity. It can't. Um, and there, you know, the the. I think the thesis I put forward, and I, I haven't heard anyone talk about this, so you know, hopefully it's the first time you're hearing this, um, is that authority matters way more than authenticity. That if you come from a place of authority, if you're talking from a place of expertise and authority, you're far more likely to get an, an audience that trusts you, engages with you, listens to you, watches you, et cetera, and it's far more effective. Um, yeah. You know what that reminds me of actually just came to mind uh, for the Game of Thrones fans. There was a scene with Cersei Lannister and Peter Baelish, and he was asking, you know, what is power? Is it money? Is it influence? And she basically had all of her knights uh, point swords at him and then stop, turn around. And she's just like, power is power. And don't, you know, <laughs> often forget it. it kind of reminded me of that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, authority. It's, it's really, it, it really is, right? Um, and authority is something you can actually go out and do and build and get, right? Like uh, being authentic just always felt very nebulous to me. I wasn't, was never really sure what it meant. Um, Oath League says, I was at the ESTA conference and thought about 50% was hucksters and 50% were real esports. Sad I missed this one. It was definitely bigger than the ESTA conference, um, most definitely. Uh, I'm positive that Paul was in the hucksters category, by the way. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I just, uh, oh yeah, I want to read Owen's comments here. He says, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, but Rogue's sponsor guarantee rate will be, will be displayed on their Rocket League team away decal and thought that was really cool. That's just my weekly RLCS thought. Uh, this is the first team to announce sponsors on their car decal. Well, this is a, I, I actually hadn't seen that story, Owen. Um, so appreciate that, but that is cool to see deeper integration. Look, I, my panel was on branded content, and so I would almost put that in this bucket, uh, this very kind of subtle integration. Uh, Oathleak says, how do you define authority in esports? I'm curious what you guys think. How would you define it? You want me, Lindsay, do you have? Either of you. First? Yeah, you go first. I'm going to gather some thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought yet. So shooting from the hip here, you know, authority can be done in a number of ways. I think you know, one longevity, it's such a, it, which is a weird thing to say because it's such a new industry, but I've still met people that have worked in video gaming at large for 15 plus years, right? So when you talk about someone that works for a developer or works for an agency or whatever entry point they might be in, the fact that they've been doing it for a while, it's not the, the, the end all be all, but that's like the first check for me is, okay, so they know what they're talking about because they've been here for more than four or five years. By the way, myself here as a quasi authority, only having been in the space for five years. So like I said, not the end all be all, but one of the things is just that career longevity. I, I, I validate and I trust these people that came from traditional video gaming before esports branched off of it, right? They were part of that, uh, you know, the main, I think, um, I don't know, fundamental part of what esports is. I think another thing in terms of esports authority is, you know, I, I think it's someone that has a track record of, of success under their belt, 
right? And success means a number of different things depending on what you do. So again, whether you're working for a developer and you put out 15 different, you know, mobile apps or, or PC or, you know, titles on Steam, whether you work for a talent agency and you represent, you know, or have represented, even if they eventually left you, if you've represented a number of talent, because to me, succeeding is inherent or, or rather goes hand in hand with failing a lot. So even if, so also, even if you failed in a lot of those projects, the fact that you've done them or participated in them for whatever positive or negative outcome, I, I think just having that experience or, and, and again, uh, one being years and the other really being opportunities projects. Um, I'm sure there's more there and I, I don't want to hog the, the spotlight here off flimsy if you've had time to think, but the, the first two that come to mind shooting from the hip are people that work for those companies where they've been here for a long time and people that have done a hundred events or have managed 50 people, you know what I mean? Or just that have just failed or succeeded so many times that they kind of, you know, they know what they're talking about. It's not their first time around the block. Yeah. And when I, those are definitely good points. When I think of authority, I think about intent. I think that, I mean, this does feed into the authenticity conversation for sure. But I think if you, if you're setting out to be at the top of the industry because you want to be there, it's not necessarily going to lead you to where you want to be. Whereas if you set out wanting to make an impact on the industry because you want to see it grow, where you're more interested in kind of contributing to what's already there, contributing to the people that are already in it, that are doing good work, finding those people, uplifting those people. I think that that is a better marker or it should hopefully be a better marker of your success. Uh, I think that there's people who are definitely in it for highly, highly self-motivated and image reasons that doesn't necessarily lend, lend itself well to success. Um, I felt like Venn was a little bit that way, honestly. It was like, it was like a experiment in like, oh, gamers like these three things. So we're going to take them all and put them into a show and we'll just see how it works out. And we're just going to copy every trend or, or try to be in on every trend and all that. So I don't know that that is a different way of saying authenticity. But I think when you couple that with actually wanting to build a successful business and make sure that your employees and yourself are set, then you get something that's a little bit different. Um, so I don't know. I don't know that that's completely coherent, but essentially like, I guess authority comes from building a smart business that aims to add to the industry rather than a play where you're just trying to make yourself look better. Um, so I'm not sure that that completely no, answers I follow it, you. but I think that's yeah. part of it. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I follow you. I mean, you're talking about like people that actually have to achieve something that they believed in versus people that do things for the optics, right? Where it's hollow. Yeah, exactly. So if I if I mm -hmm. followed you, no, I think that 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 mm -hmm. fits. Yeah, I and I think it, having confidence no, I was just, when you come in is sorry. important. Yeah. So I was just going to say that's kind me, of that's my thought. Yeah. Authenticity is a subset of authority, actually. Mm -hmm. Like if yeah. you drew the Venn, di mm -hmm. Venn diagrams. Um, but, 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 uh, there is, there are tangible things in my mind, like experience, right? Like knowledge and expertise, right? There are measurable, there are measurable things like, and, and, uh, like actually measurable success, right? So these, these are tangible, measurable things that you can ascribe to authority. Um, I think the intangible is more, um, is more just how you how well you express yourself, how well you can communicate ideas to other people, right? How well um, those things are received. Um, I think there are some intangibles, but to me, authority is so much easier to measure and achieve, right? To say, okay, Jimmy, we're going to make you the authority. Here are the steps you need to take, right? You need to gain knowledge. You need to build experience. You need to, right? We we can actually create a program to say, here's how you can become an authority in a space. Um, with esports, it's no different. And the example I gave on the panel was, if you gave Tim the Tatman a Logitech headset and told him, you know, push this on your stream, okay? Tim the Tatman will go on his stream. He'll be like, oh my God, the Logitech headset's so cool. And it's totally authentic, right? And everyone will say, oh my God, that was so authentic. To me, that's less powerful, much less powerful than if you took a guy who's also a streamer or a girl, right? who used to be a sound engineer and, and has owned 65 different headsets 
and says, hey, look, I've tried 65 of them. I studied as a sound engineer. Now I'm a gamer and a streamer. By the way, the Logitech are the best. To me, that's a much more powerful um, statement because that person has authority versus just the authenticity of like a Tim the Tatman kind of activation there in that scenario. Now, Tim the Tatman may be an authority on certain things, right? Like if, if you're talking about how to become a big streamer, Tim the Tatman most definitely is an authority. Um, and so if he was doing a course on how to become a big streamer, that's a perfect activation to me because he's the, the authority there. And so this is the point I make around authority trumps authenticity, or at least authenticity is a subset of something much more important like authority. Um, so. Well, that, and also, that, I mean, you've made this point a bunch of times, but running a good business is part of that too. <laughs> Like, yeah, uh, it's, it's great if you're it was, authentic, but <laughs> it was the thesis of starting business of esports, right? Like esports insider, they're authentic. They're writing about gaming, but they have no authority, right? The the 22 year old journalist there doesn't has not done any business, has no experience, has no expertise, can't give you insight on on business things, um, and so has no authority. And to me, the authority trumps the authenticity. Um, Oath says, authenticity trumps cool. Yes, Paul, 100%. I'm glad you agree, Oath. Owen says, when I think of authentic, I think of the juice. Owen, we missed the juice this week. He is uh, stuck in an airport, hopefully in the chat still. His ego um, is going to be ego is going to be out of control now. <laughs> Oath says, Tim wouldn't be authentic in that situation, though. He's responding to basically Ned. Well, I think a lot of people would perceive that as an authentic activation in the sense that he's a gamer. He uses a headset. If he pushes a headset, it's pretty authentic, right? It's not, he's not, and if he's using it, it makes it that much more authentic. Um, Oath, Oath, I'm starting to think you are the juice, no? Yeah, um, <laughs> he's trolling us. Jeff, is that you? Uh, 